All right, it's Caitlin Clark uh, following their Iowa's championship game loss to LSU and Ole O'Learn. You've been on the show before. You haven't met my guy, Jim Trotter. Jim, Ole, Ole, Jim. Uh, this, this is going to be a journey because like, Ole brings it. Ole brings it. And, and Ole, I'll say this. I'm not even going to ask you to freestyle. I saw an interview you went on and you just dropped a freestyle. It was crazy. So, man, you know, <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to ask, I'm not going to ask you to do that. I love it. Um, yes. But what did you but what did you think? We were talking earlier about Jill Biden's invitation and disinvitation mm-hmm. of Iowa uh, to the White House <laughs> after their loss. And then Caitlin Clark kind of answering a question, but not really talking about the racial dynamics at play. Uh, not necessarily on the court, but off the court. Yeah. yeah. What did you make of, of what you saw in the uh, women's final four? So I see we see two things going on, right? We see racism in terms of how Angel Reese is being treated and why everybody is taking up this this cause as though, you know, Iowa has been harmed or Caitlin Clark has been harmed. But you also see the infantilizing of women because they're not allowing this team. This is a disservice, not just to Angel Reese, but also to Iowa, who did not ask for this coddling. Like, uh, like Caitlin Clark said, this is a part of the game. She was engaged in this. No one, she's not asking for anybody to champion her or to sympathize with her or coddle her. But instead, they're doing it and they're making a part of this larger uh, culture war nonsense and this race narrative that does not help that does not help women that compete in sports. That's not fair to women that compete. That is not fair to Caitlin Clark. And it's also unreasonable. But it's important, you know, in moments like this, I think it's actually great that we have such a smoking, um, such a smoking gun of an example of how the double standards and the racism, something as clear as the same exact gesture. And then she does it. And all of a sudden and, you know, Jill Biden is um out of her depths, <laughs> out of her depths, and she needs to do it. <laughs> no, she is. She's out of her depths. And, you know, it's a problem because it shows that when, when Black people win, instead of it being about celebrating, you know, the win that, uh, about Black people, what they instead what they instead center, <laughs> what they instead center is the feelings of white people, and that's what it becomes about, right? Before, the winner always goes, but instead of it being about the winner, it's, oh, oh, no, not these these well, these white women. They were beaten. No, no, no. They played well. They have to be here, too. And that's unfair, but it also shows the way America moves the goalposts. It's never good enough to compete on their rules, compete by their terms, do as they do. If they are if they are perceived as the losers, they will switch up the rules of the system, and that's what we're seeing now by even suggesting, suggesting it. Because even if Caitlin Clark or Iowa had been hurt, let's say they had felt away, the hurt feelings of white women does not involve, you know, does not require the involvement of of the first lady of the United States of America changing any systems or other people deciding, hey, we're going to call everybody classless and everything that we can come up with. So we're seeing we're seeing two things play out and it's not to the service of either team. You know, I would love to get your opinion on this. Michael, Michael alluded to this. The fact that when the question was asked, is race a component in this discussion? Caitlin never answered that. She went straight yeah. to Angel's a competitor. She's getting more criticism than she deserves, yada, yada, yada. But the point I would have is if I, if I were asking her, if I were doing that interview, I would have come back and asked her that again, because I think it is important for white people to talk about race in this discussion and not only put that on us to bring it yeah. up and talk about it. So your thoughts on that, how important it might have been if Caitlin had actually had to address that issue and speak on the role of race in this conversation? Absolutely. I mean, I think it's unfortunate because pushing on it would they would have they would have turned that against the 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 common the person who asked the question right it would have become oh it's inferred from her answer that it's a yes and you know she spoke up in favor of her and then that would have become another second second tier level to the coddling of white women right they were first already jumped out at oh this gesture and now they would say oh now she's being forced to answer these questions and they want to make her a commentator on race and that would just uh fuel fuel this discussion that they would have they would have but yeah absolutely i mean they it's it's important. It's, I think it's incumbent upon people to not always put it on angel reason. These people and black people who we, we already know are hyper criticized, hyper scrutinized to have the discussions on race. Right. Angel Reese was immediately confronted with having to explain. I'm always called to ghetto. I'm always, uh, um, you know, uh, politicized and policed in this way as a black player. It's always been this about about this for me. But you see the one time, you know, this kind of question and this kind of um discourse because this is the only time the white players have to deal with this kind of discourse and it'll still be weaponized in a negative way so i understand i understand the um the per the interviewer not following up on the question because 
they would have used that and latched on that to turn the tides on, on him. But yeah, it is very important. And it would have been more helpful uh, that she, if she had spoken up and said affirmatively, yes, it has to do with race. I think it is inferred to be, you know, to be a little fair to her and to give her a little bit more credit is, I think it's better. I'm the, I didn't even expect to see her come out and say something. I saw earlier, I tweeted earlier a video of her because they asked her already. I think this is um, another follow-up conversation. They asked her originally how she feel about the gesture. And she basically was like, I hadn't seen it. The team played well. She didn't say anything disparaging, but she didn't come out and say anything affirmatively in support or, you know, recognizing the critique. So I think this is her making her way there. So I'll give her a little bit of credit for that. But it would be important if this would be a good time for the players themselves to come out if their team said, hey, we're not trying to go to the White House. We're not the ones asking for all this extra. We are fine. We played. This is a part of it. But at least she's trying to do it. I, I want to hear from both of you. What do you think of this? And I called it the new era of, of the women's college basketball game. And I love it. And in this new era, you have somebody like Angel Reese, who off the court is amazing. Name, image, and likeness. She is doing the thing and doing it at a high level. She transferred from Maryland to LSU. Uh, she has really uh, figured out the market. She's marketable. She's opinionated. She doesn't back down and she's a talented. She's a double double machine on the court. Now she's a national champion and she won the championship. The criticism comes. She said, oh, bring it on. Bring it on. Oh, I'm ready for this. Oh, I'm ready. Yeah. I don't care what you say. I'm going to keep yeah. going. She mm -hmm. continues to go. She is not shrinking and I don't think she is. I don't think she is uh, um, an anomaly. I think yeah. there are, in this new era, these women are playing the game at a higher level. And no disrespect to women who played 20 years ago or even 10 years ago. It's just a different game. They're playing at a high yeah. level. They shoot it well. Uh, they're yeah. athletic. Go to the hoop. They're, they, 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 know the, uh, they know the style of the sport. They, they get into yeah. all of the, the entertain. They're entertainers. Interest. And Interest. They're at, and, and they know about advocacy. She I, mean, I love what's happening into. here. It's changing in real time. Olay, what did you think of it? Absolutely. I was having that conversation with my friend today. She's driving interest. And I think there's a beauty in coming up in the world, right? She's young and coming up in the world of seeing how other people galvanize a, a public image, a perception, a brand, social media personality. And she has done that in an exceptional way because listen, I call, I'm a commentator. I talk about things all the time. I've never talked about women's basketball a day in my life, but I know the Bayou Batty. <laughs> I know the Bayou Batty. I looked today to go buy a hoodie. <laughs> and I said, she is in like all jokes aside, that's going to do something really amazing for women's sports because never in my life, you know what I mean? Like when I was a little kid, I think we, we talked about Leslie, somebody, you see what I'm saying? You know, Lisa uh, Leslie. Oh, Lisa Leslie. Lisa, Lisa there Leslie. There we go. There we go. That the last time, you know what I mean? It's really come to the mainstream of people who are not paying attention to sports. And I think that's important because what well, you know, women's basketball, women's sports in general has always been the dust been done the disservice of just not being given coverage, just being, you know, it becoming a part of the the cultural digest to just uh ignore it, to think it's not as important. We pay attention on this. We don't think about this. But what's something like this, not only do you see you being a champion, but we see you being unapologetically black. We see you refusing to, to shrink yourself, refusing to make yourself small, refusing to fall to the criticism. That right there is what is going to make her an icon. And it's not just to people who are inspired by, by basketball. I, as a black woman in any field, you see that and you're like, we all as black women, as black people, but as black women, we know the pressure, you know, don't have your nails like that. Don't have your hair like that. How do you mute yourself in every single profession. Mm. So to see her as young as she is and for them to come at her so hard and my girl is laughing, giggling. She's handled this flawlessly. She's done something amazing. She is going to create a, a, a bridge, I think. And I think we're going to see her be be uh, the inspiration for a lot after her. We're going to see a generation of girls that play sports really look up to her. It's an amazing moment for her. No question. Mike, if I could, uh, can I co-sign on all of that? The thing to me, the yeah. larger point here that I see is I see an empowerment of, of athletes and particularly black athletes. I see athletes now, or I shouldn't even say athletes, black people who play sports saying, you know what? I'm going to be my authentic self. For too long, we always had to try and kowtow to what someone else was telling us what was acceptable. Go back to the NBA where they put in that dress code, right? You couldn't be, oh, you yep, couldn't yep. have the Allen Iversons of the world, right? You couldn't dress that way and whatnot. And now what do we have as we look at sports? We have people like Lamar Jackson who say, I may be a starting quarterback in the NFL, but I'm not trying to live up to what your image of that is. I'm going to be my true authentic self. And so to hear Don Staley after they lost 
talk about authenticity and then to hear Angel talk about, I'm going to be my unapologetic, authentic self. And I'm doing this for the people, the young girls who look like me and giving them that voice. I think this is just, I do think we're seeing the start of a movement here where black people who happen to play sports are saying, mm -hmm. I am no longer mm -hmm. going to allow you to define who I am, how I look, how I talk, how I dress, whatever it is. I am going to be me. Right. To slice me up and make me a product that only that only dances and serves you in the way that you want and what you like and to just perform. And it's look at her. The, I'm not keeping it cute. Listen, yeah. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. But, you know, and also I also like the point about uh, and I brought this up yesterday, how it's changed a little bit. And I, I, I guess, you know, I, I wonder if it's, it's some of it is good and some of it just opens us up to additional criticism from, from those who weren't watching college basketball, women's college yeah. basketball. So the good, the good news is ratings have never been higher. More people were into that championship game, LSU and Iowa, and, and people, people watched it for the entertainment of it. Some people yeah. watched it because uh, they had other agendas, whatever it is, but people were watching it. And so you saw female athletes doing some of the things, some of the things that men do like nobody is, yeah. does anybody criticize Steph Curry for doing this at the end of game six right. in Boston to the crowd right. many times <laughs> and okay, time to go to sleep now. Bye bye. Yeah. And, and like Boston, it, it's, it's legend in Boston, Jim and Ole. It's legend old school uh, yeah. Celtics fans still talk about Larry Bird checked himself into a game. He told he told players what he was going to do to them. <laughs> then he did it. He got into, Larry Bird yeah. got into Larry Bird got into a fight with Dr. J because he was yeah. keeping score. He was like, yeah. okay, eight, 18 to four doc. I scored another one <laughs> 20 to four doc. Then they went at it. Okay, yeah. fine. So the women are doing that. But I guess the flip side is now we got to deal with that's good, but we got to deal with all this extra stuff that men do it, but men don't have to yeah. hear the criticism of it. So yeah. women are doing it, but they're hearing criticism that the men don't. How do, how do we feel about thing? that? That's reality, regardless of whether or not we're paying attention to it, right? Like women are yeah. always going to receive a certain kind of criticism, always be perceived in a different kind of way. And something my daddy recently said to me when I was complaining about um, public figuredom of being being constantly criticized, my daddy said, um, that's because you're consequential. That's the good. That's a good problem to have, right? Mm. It's when you're inconsequential, mm. when people mm. don't care about what Ooh, you're doing. Say that again. And, hey, give, yes, give, when, give daddy <laughs> props again. Say yes. what, what happened? What did he say? My father said that's when you're consequential and that's a good problem to have is when you're inconsequential that it's an issue. And the problem that women's women's sports have always been greeted with is that people treat it as inconsequential. They're, they're not thinking about it. They're not talking about it. We don't know what's happening at all. So this is a beautiful moment now for people to actually be be focused on it, whether or not because they're criticizing. And an important thing, I think, is not everybody can handle scrutiny, not everybody. And most people cannot. Most people can't handle right. that. Most people cannot handle the weight of what is being the symbol or the face to what is the start of something different, a start of a movement. And I think it's beautiful that we're seeing somebody like Angel Reese who seems capable of weathering it because she's handled that excellent. I mean, excellently. I couldn't have coached it better myself. I'm like, this has been, every response she's had has been beautiful. And I think that is a very, you know, comforting thing because we see different people have different responses. You know, I seen on, I remember when it happened on Twitter when Shikari had her moment that went differently. You know what I'm saying? That went differently. Yeah. <laughs> so I think this is good. <laughs> this is good. We're seeing this go well. And I think, I think this is, uh, this is a moment. I think what's also important is we see somebody who is aware she's not, it's not just happening to her. She's very, very actively involved and in how she's branding herself, what she's doing and why she's doing it. She didn't just do the gesture and then, you know, shrugged it off. She explained, Hey, I have received this kind of uh, scrutiny, uh, scrutiny. This is the kind of scrutiny that y'all give black women like me. And so I'm not doing it for you. I am consciously here for other women like me. And I'm going to keep doing this until y'all see us and you really show space. And I think that is what's important. It's not, we're not making her a symbol. She came out and let us know who she was and what she was and what she was here to do. So the thing, I, I, the thing I love about it too, is that when an athlete turns the camera around on those who are creating the narratives, and says, y'all got to look in the mirror. This is as much about y'all as it is about me or my teammates or anyone else. And that's when the media gets real uncomfortable, right?
when all oh, of a yeah. sudden they got an answer. You know, so yeah. I applaud her for that. I applaud Don Staley for doing the same thing. You know, any athlete that does that, LeBron did it during the one case where he said, y'all going to ask me about this. So why aren't you asking me about this? Right. You know, and it makes us answer those questions, which are uncomfortable at times. But I think they are things that could possibly lead to progress here. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, uh, Ole, you're getting your LSU hoodie. I'm getting an LSU <laughs> Angel Reese yes. number 10 jersey. I'm going to wear it. I'm going to wear it proudly. And I'm so Easy. glad. I'm so glad that you were able to uh, stop by and, and talk with us for a bit. We always enjoy. Always enjoy yes. uh, spending some time with you. And now you got to meet Jim Trotter. Jim, you got to yes. meet Ole. Thank no, you. What a day. Pleasure. Pleasure. This has been great. Pleasure. Thank you, y'all. Bye. I right, appreciate you. <laughs> Bye. Hey, thank you for watching brother from another. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, go ahead and do that. Now. Don't forget you can catch us three to four weekdays on PeacockTV.com and on Sirius XM channel 85.